so now we already have our membranes, right? The phospholipid bilayer with the cholesterol and the proteins and the sugars. But at this point, we're going to be looking at transport and movement across the membrane. And we need to bring in some of those molecules. But for now, we're going to be focused on the just phospholipid bilayer at the moment uh, and the nonpolar environment created by the tails. So that's going to create our barrier across the membrane from one side to the other. So we look over here, this is a couple examples. I'll get at this one in a second. Let's say we have a chamber and we divide it in half with a membrane, a phospholipid bilayer, just like this. This is done in the lab. To one side, we add a bunch of sugar molecules to the water that's already there. So one side has sugar plus water and the other side is just water. So there's no sugar molecules, but we have a lot of water molecules. So remember water itself, in most of, most solutions that we're going to discuss, water is going to be our solvent. And whatever's dissolved in water is going to be what we call the solute. And when we talk about molar concentration, say for example, molar concentration of a solution, so we'll talk about solutions. We're usually just talking about the solute concentration. So a one molar glucose solution. The thing is that glucose is not the only molecule there in the solution. It's glucose and water. Water has a concentration as well. Water is going to be behaving and moving across a membrane in one direction or the other. And this is what, one of the things that we're going to get into. And the molecules, the solute molecules, may or may not also be moving across a membrane. So when the membrane itself is becoming a barrier, right, the membrane here, in this case, is the barrier. It may or may not allow the water molecules to easily move across the solute molecules. So in this case, say a sugar to easily move across. It may or may not. All right, and it depends on a number of things that we'll, we'll be getting into. If we only have a phospholipid bilayer, so phospholipid bilayer only, we're not talking about the proteins yet or anything else. What This is what we see. Okay. What we see is that water molecules can easily move back and forth across a membrane. They can move in either direction. First question might be, um, do they tend to move more in any one direction or another? Well, it's not as easy as just saying, well, they move more out of the cell or move more in. It depends on other sorts of things. It depends on the concentration of the water molecules. All molecules are going to move All molecules are going to move from areas of high concentration to low concentration. Okay. What we will get into more later as we talk about um, energetics in cells, but high concentration, some places to save some places to write here. High concentration environments are also high energy environments. So high concentration is high energy, low concentration, low energy. Okay, so straightforward. The next part of this is stability. So how stable is a particular environment? So what is it, how likely is it that that environment will stay the same or how likely is it that that environment will change? If it is stable, it's not going to change very much or it doesn't need to change at this moment in time. If it's unstable, that means it's definitely going to be changing. It's going to be trying to change at least at this time because it's, it's not in a stable state. High concentration, high energy environments are unstable and low concentration environments are stable. So what does that mean? That means that in areas where, say, let's say the sugar molecules, let's focus on them, the sugar molecules themselves on this side of the membrane are in a high concentration. I'm drawing on the other side, there are lots of sugar molecules on this side. 
So this is also the high energy side. There's lots of sugar molecules, which means they're bumping into each other. So say for example, maybe I'll just put a few. I'll put a few on this side. I want to imagine them as, as people walking around blindfolded. So if you have a, a set size room and you have one or two people in the room and you have blindfolded them, you say, you know, walk around and we'll time how long it takes you to bump into something. There are not many people, there are not many things in the room. It might take a while before they start bumping into things. If we fill the room with people, blindfold them all, they're immediately going to start colliding and bumping into one another just, just all, the, all the time. Every collision was going to generate friction. All that friction will release heat. That is energy. So there's going to be a lot of energy in this environment, which makes it unstable. It, the environment's going to want to move to a more stable state, a low energy state. So this is what we're talking about as the force behind diffusion. Diffusion is driven by energy, an energy that is stable versus unstable. We have an unstable, high energy environment wants to flow or move to become more stable. That is essentially diffusion. So diffusion is defined as the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to low concentration. That's simple diffusion. Okay. Now, if those molecules can move across the membrane, they will. They will go right between the phospholipid bilayers. Now, certain molecules can and certain molecules cannot. We have found that I've mentioned gases. Small, nonpolar molecules can move right between the phospholipid bilayer, right between the tails. Oh, I'll just put move freely. They can move freely from one side of the membrane to the other. Larger and, say, polar molecules, and this also goes for charged molecules, so that's charge. are inhibited by the barrier. So the membrane itself. The membrane is the barrier blocking the molecules from moving from one side to the other. So in this example, we have two, there's going to be two things going on. The first thing that we could easily recognize uh, are the sugar molecules are on one side they're in a high concentration. This is a high energy side. This is more unstable. They're going to want to flow to the other side. That's what we call diffusion. So there's going to want to diffuse from side A to side B. They may not be able to do this because they are polar molecules and they might be slightly larger molecules than what can fit between the sugars. So they're stuck. They're stuck on one side. Now, water molecules are smaller. They're, they're an oxygen and two hydrogens. Remember, the oxygen carries a partial negative charge. The hydrogens carry partial positive charges. Hydrogens are one proton, one electron. That one electron they have is taken by the oxygen and held on to longer than they are given back. So the oxygen tends to feel more negative. The hydrogen tends to feel more positive. Polar. But they're small. And water molecules can tend to move freely from one side of the membrane to another. Right? This is a special case of diffusion that we call osmosis. So osmosis is diffusion, is movement of molecules from high to low concentration. But it's a specific type of diffusion for water only. Okay. So that's what we're talking about, water. So in this example, it's easy to see the sugar molecules want to move across. But what about the water molecules? Do they want to move from one side to the other? And if so, do they want to move more so from one side to the other? Well, if we think about it in terms of concentration, if on this side of the membrane, it's mostly all water molecules. So water molecules are going to take up almost all the space on this side. There are very, very few sugar molecules. On this side of the membrane, there's a mixture of sugar and water molecules, which means there's going to be, in a defined space, 
fewer water molecules. So fewer water, mo water molecules in this space, more over here, which means that the water is going to tend to want to move to this side more so. It's going to want to diffuse from high concentration of water to low concentration of water. Water is a molecule. It will behave like all other molecules. So water molecules are going to move from high to low concentration across the membrane. That's what we call osmosis. Usually, the water concentration is opposite the solute concentration. So the solute is what's dissolved in the water. If there's a lot of the, say, a lot of the sugar, there's less water. If there's less sugar, there's more water. So it's sort of the opposite. So if the sugar is going to want to move in this direction from A to B, the water molecules here are going to want to move the opposite direction from B to A. In the lab, you're going to do an experiment. You're going to make up a little cell. You're going to drop it into a beaker, and this beaker will contain water. Now, and only water, just pure water. Your little cell is going to be water and a sugar. Okay. And what we're going to do is measure them. We're going to weigh those little artificial cells, these little balls, um, before you put them in the water, in the beaker, and then you're going to weigh them afterward. And what we're going to then go ahead and find is, does their weights change? So two things could be happening. The sugar molecules could be leaving. They might. They might try to get out of here and get into the water of the beaker. Another thing that could happen, you know, water molecules could come out, but water molecules may want to come in. And, and so ideally here, if we follow this example up top, the beaker is the environment with lots of water molecules. Okay, There's no sugar in it. In our case, it's going to be pure water. The little ball, the little sphere that we put in there, which is going to have sugar water in it, has some water, but also has sugar. So technically, the concentration of the water in the beaker is 100%. The concentration of water in here is not 100%. It's going to be lower because some of the space is taken up by sugar. So water is going to want to move into this little ball. The sugar you know, could move out, maybe. But in this case, this is what you're going to be testing you know, in the lab to see sort of what will happen. Will they equal each other out? Will one gain or the other? In this particular example here, uh, we're saying that the sugar is not permeable. So if you look at my, in my drawing here, the sugar molecules cannot get across the membrane. So they would like to move across, but they can't because they're too big and they're too polar. So they're stuck. Water molecules are going to try to move then across to try to reach an equilibrium, an, uh, a more of a lower energy state, a more stable state to balance out the concentration differences. So as you weigh these things in the beginning and you weigh them in the end, they may change. They may gain weight. They may lose weight. If they gain weight, that means water came into them. And so now they weigh more because there's more water there. So this is something that we could see in a practical situation uh, in a lab. Um, that you can actually measure, and so you can actually measure osmosis in terms of how much water moves into an environment. So that's part of our lab that's going to then tie into uh, this particular concept. So quick summary. Diffusion is movement of any molecule from its, its own concentration, its own high concentration to its own low concentration. That includes water, but for water we call it osmosis. So water moving from its own high to low concentration. The high concentration environments are high energy, and that's unstable. So they want to move to a more stable state, which is why diffusion occurs in the first place. The membrane itself now is a barrier. So it may allow things to move across it, and it may not. So what we'll see is that a few things can go across the phospholipids regardless. They can just go one way or the other, which based on the concentration. Other molecules are going to be prevented. The membrane is selective, right? It selects for certain things to move across and it traps other things on one side. In living cells, though, all kinds of molecules, big molecules, polar molecules, charged ions can get across membranes. So what we have to find out is the next part. How do these other molecules get across this nonpolar phospholipid bilayer? 
And that would kind of add to that. Now we're going to bring in the proteins and we'll start to look at things called ion channels and carriers and pores and see how they can then essentially poke holes in the membrane without destroying the membrane and allow the movement of the other molecules. And that's what's coming up next. <laughs>